Hello and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops Demystified podcast. Today we're joined by David Cohn, who's currently the Director of Revenue Operations, that Revenue Operations, not Sales Operations, um, at Built In. David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tom. And the reason I mentioned that in the intro is the actually the episode before this, we had Thess Marth on from Forrester, where we talked about this trend of sales operations trending towards revenue operations. And I know that you, David, have been through that transition in the business already. So I do want to touch on that. But before, can we understand first how you initially got into sales operations? Yeah, um, I didn't study it in school. So it uh, kind of fell into it. Um, one of my first jobs was in consulting and uh, I was traveling around the country, going to hospital systems figuring out the process that doctors were doing offline, trying to figure out how to get them onto electronic medical record. A lot of process improvement, um, a lot of change management, a lot of looking at the data of, you know, how things are being used after the fact. Um, and then made a, made a shift into a completely different industry. And uh, I was at LinkedIn for three years. And that's really where I got into working into a sales organization. So I was working with our global accounts, our biggest customers, and helping our sales reps utilize our proprietary data to help them sell their products to our to their customers. And so got to you know work with some very seasoned sales reps who taught me everything that I know about sales now, and then at the same time got to learn the technical skills of big data, SQL, Hive, Hadoop, um, data visualization tools, and got. Um, that's where really I found my sweet spot, which was, you know, using data in the context of sales. And so sales operations was something that, um, made sense for me next. So I wanted to give it a try. And so, um, was at a, a startup in Chicago for about six months and then, uh, got recruited over to built in to, uh, to lead up the sales operations, uh, focus in 2018. And so I've been doing it now for about two and a half years. Um, and that role has expanded now into revenue operations across the entire business. Got it. So helping people sell with data. Um, can we now zoom into built in and understand a little bit more about how many sales reps or how many customer service reps as well, how many people in marketing, and then also how many people in your RevOps team? Yeah, we have, uh, the world's changed a little bit for us over the past few months. Um, as I'm sure it has for, for most companies. Um, but currently we have uh, seven AEs, three SDRs, um, 10 account managers, and then six customer success. So across the, that spectrum plus management, it's around 30 people. Um, and then marketing, we have a, a large marketing org across um, you know, B2B marketing, but also B2C because we drive a marketplace. Um, and then, so they're about, I want to say 30 people. Um, and then our, my sales, my revenue operations team is five people. So I've got one person focused on sales ops, one on revenue ops, or one on marketing ops, one on systems, and then one on data and insights. Got it. Can you quickly share your, the revenue tech stack? Yeah. Uh, I'd say it all starts with Salesforce in the middle. Um, I'm uh, definitely a Salesforce chunky. I've found way too much value from just that one tool. Um, but we, we surround it with a, a ton of various tools that help us with different things. So we use Outreach, we use Chorus, we use Lean Data, Insight Squared, Zoom Info, Lead IQ, um, Drift, Terminus, Sales Navigator. If we're, uh, just throwing out names here. Yeah, yeah, I know. You just rolled them off. Um, <laughs> David, I, I want to understand a little bit more about the shift you made to Revenue Ops, why you, you guys did that and what impact that's having on the business. Yeah, so the my initial charter was to help new business sales growth. And so traditional sales operations, you know, thinking about sales cycles, size of pipeline, win rate, um, 
and ACVs. What are the things, the projects that we can do to really drive more sales? So that was a, a primary focus for my first six months. But at the end of the day, uh, our business is, um, you know, part SaaS and part service. So there's an element of being able to get our services delivered as fast as possible to recognize revenue faster. Um, and so my CEO, you know, wanted to expand my responsibilities to just think about the, the entire revenue number instead of just the, the top line bookings number. And so that meant thinking about things like delivery of our products, the customer success elements, how we actually treat our customers throughout the journey of their life cycle to a make them renew, which is again, you know, drive more bookings and revenue, but also how to make sure that they're using the products that they have so that we can make sure they're successful, but also we as a business can recognize that revenue as fast as possible. Oh, that makes total sense. Since you have been focused on the overall revenue, what is something that you guys have done as a team that has significantly boosted productivity of the revenue organization? I would say the, the thing I'm most proud of is the, the fulfillment aspect of our revenue teams, meaning like our customers buy products and we have to deliver on them. We augmented that entire process and, and moved it all into a system in Salesforce to create a system of record um, instead of various Google Sheets, various um, Airtable and, and different systems that didn't talk to each other. And so moving it all into to Salesforce gained alignment across the, the sales teams, the customer success teams, the delivery teams. So they would all speak the same language, um, all be in one place. And then at the, at the end of the day, it's all about the data that that drives. So now we're making decisions on, you know, what's the capacity of our writers to deliver the to deliver the products that we have. What is uh, the volume of which our uh, our inventory gets used in a month? So, at the end of the day, it really came down to being able to use all that data that we were gaining um, to make decisions. But at the same time, we made the teams far more productive by doing that. Over the past few weeks, we've spoken to a hundred sales leaders around the world to understand the impact of COVID-19 on revenue. And we've combined these insights into one single report that covers the immediate impact, the commercial outlook, the tech stack that you need, and actionable advice for sales leaders. You can claim this whole report completely for free if you go to ebster.com forward slash COVID. That's ebster.com forward slash COVID. Which ties into your sweet spot using data to sell. Um, yeah. Okay, it makes total sense. Now, you did mention being impacted by COVID-19. How has that changed the way that you've been working with the sales reps? I would say the biggest thing is that our ideal customer profile has changed, I'd say, twice since uh, COVID-19 started uh, really impacting the business in March. Um, we are a business that's looking to help companies hire. And at the start of COVID-19, um, the, the amount of companies that we're hiring had, had dwindled. So it was an exercise of how can we help the team focus in on our ideal customer profile. But now as the world is becoming a little, is, is finding a new normal and people are hiring again and, you know, we're seeing the economy bounce back is like, okay, how can we, we stretch this ICP again to like really figure out our TAM? Um, because the most unproductive thing the reps can be doing is just focusing on everything all of the time um, when really we want them to be really honed in on where people are hiring that is going to make sense for them to buy our products now. Got it. So your your ICP was like this, or like it, your your time you could say it was like this, and then it kind of constricted, mm -hmm. and then now it's kind of expanding again. And yeah. so it's been walking the salespeople through that process and ensuring that they are targeting the right people. Yeah, and that's like through a variety of like what are the industries we're going after, building account scoring systems, um, making sure that we're um, tagging accounts appropriately, making sure they're being worked. Um, trying to figure out our, you know, target account to opportunity creation ratio, so we can start to understand productivity of of the reps that we we have. Got it. And yeah, we I also an interview that's going out just before this 
uh, with VP of Sales Operations at MongoDB, um, she was saying about how they, if, instead of re reducing team size, they, they were shifting resources to different industries based on those that were more interested in buying database software. And so that seems like similar to you guys. Have you, have you been moving reps between focus industries over the last couple of months? Yeah, we've been, uh, you know, I think the, the number one indicator for us recently has been funding. So we've been watching the funding wire really closely. Um, but within micro industries, yeah, we definitely, um, you know, we were looking around and seeing, you know, it seems like um, telecommunications is picking back up, productivity softwares, the air tables, the um, base camps, all of those companies of the world, like as, as people are going remote, um, those companies were feeling a boom. And so we, we did go after industries. But the other thing that we've noticed is, you know, you go after telecommunications and you're assuming everyone's booming, but really Zoom is booming right now. And so they're actually um, taking market share from all of their other competitors. So um, it, it's been uh, interesting to go after industries and, and funding and trying to find what the sweet spot is. But for, for right now, funding has been the, the number one indicator of propensity to hire. Got it. Um, now I want to switch to the forecasting process. Uh, how does that work at Built In and what is your guys' role? Yeah, I'd say our number one role has been to build the infrastructure and the process for how we forecast. And then we really empower our sales managers to, to carry a lot of that out. So we use you know standard pipeline best case commit for every single deal, making sure that every reps update the sales amount, the close date, um, really those trifecta of things help us understand our forecast. Um, and then we empower the sales. We work closely with the sales managers to, to look at their forecast and then have deep conversations with their team around how to best forecast deals so that we can get an overall number. We've gotten pretty good. I'd say our, our sales managers have really, you know, because our CEO wants an updated forecast all the time, we've had to get really good at it. Um, and I'd say the complexities that have come, around, uh, come about lately around... COVID-19 have been around, um, we've offered a lot of free extensions and allowing people to like bleed or push deals, whatever vernacular you use. And so the, the tracking of that and how that impacts forecasting has been complex. So building uh, you know, the right levers in place to understand push and, and contract extensions and, and bridges and all that type of stuff uh, has been a big focus for us the last few months. Cool. Um and then my next question is, if you could only choose to measure one sales metric for the rest of your career, which would you choose? I've listened to your podcast and you ask this to everyone and it's, it's like almost a trick question. Um, I, I would say it depends. If I was at one company forever, I would pick size of pipeline because that's what I'm focused on right now. Um, and, and that's because, you know, I'm a, at one point, a mentor had taught me like, here are the four things you got to focus on to start, which is the size of your pipeline, your win rate, your deal duration, and your ACV. And so in, in our business today, three of those things are pretty consistent. Win rate has dropped a little bit right now, but it's been consistent pretty much since I started. But the size of our pipeline has grown tremendously. And then in the past few months has shrunk tremendously. And so that is the biggest variable that I'm watching. Um, and so Size of pipeline, net new opportunities created by week is what I've been looking at consistently right now. Um, but you know, again, it, it depends on the company I was at, right? Because if you've got a super transactional sale, then it might be ACV, right? If someone's signing up for the hundred dollar a month upper, up, um, package versus the two hundred dollar a month, then you got to focus on ACV. But I'd say it's one of those four things. But right now, it's it's all size of pipeline for me. Got it. And just to get those four, it's size of pipeline, win rate net new ops and what was the fourth the four are size of pipeline win rate deal duration and acv average acv yeah, got it and who was the mentor if you don't mind saying that uh, shared that with you uh yeah his name's uh kevin callahan he's at uh dialogue tech right now um he uh when i first got the uh, my first role in sales operations i just reached out to everyone in the chicago area and was like let me take you out to coffee or lunch and uh 
he took me to school, which was awesome. Interesting. Yeah. So the next question or the last question is always who is the person who's influenced or educated you the most? Is that Kevin or is there someone else? I'd say Kevin was really helpful in the early days. Um, um, Anish Shah at, um, he's at Sprout Social. He's been someone I keep in touch with. Uh, you know, we, we connect monthly, but we're shooting emails back and forth on things going on at our two companies all the time. He's been very helpful. But I think the other person that teaches me a lot about sales operations through sales is I, I have a, a, a close friend who was a mentor of mine at LinkedIn, who uh, leads the the high growth and middle market segment there. His name is Dave Toplinski, who is just a fantastic seller and sales manager. And, and he leads a, a, a huge territory now. So, you know, those, I would say between those three people, I, I get a lot of um, um, tips and tricks. Got it. And so shout out to Dave and Nish. And was it Kevin in this final? Yeah. Got it. Shout out to those three. Amazing. Um, David, the kind of core thing that I got from the chat was, it, it was almost like a thread throughout what every answer was the importance of data, how you guys have brought the fulfillment in through Salesforce, how the thing you said right at the start about how your sweet spot is using data to sell. That for me is like the core takeaway. And I guess for people listening, it's the, the takeaway is how can we put more data in Salesforce or whatever CRM you're using and then use that to help empower the reps. Um, would you, would you agree with that summary? A hundred percent. It's uh, it's what drives me every day. And that is also going to be the quote of the episode using data to sell. <laughs> David, thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks Tom.